Good morning on this beautiful Sunday morning. And welcome to New Bethel Presbyterian Church as we come here to worship our Lord and Savior here today. I'm so happy that everyone could be here with us, uh, whether you're watching online or you're here in person. Uh, before we get started, uh, I do have a few announcements. Uh, as always, we want to check the bulletin to uh, remember those that are listed on our prayer list. Uh, and we do want to extend our deepest Christian sympathies to the family of Boots Ramsey. Boots, of course, as we all know, passed away uh, on Thursday, October the 7th. She was such a blessing to many of us here at New Bethel and through this community. So our prayers are with them, and may the peace of the Lord surround the family during this time. Uh, the harvest table back here on the, in the back, uh, the pew is filling up with things. Uh, we're going to continue to collect through next Sunday, so you can uh, check your bulletin for the items that are needed uh, for that. Christmas is still a few months away, but now is the time to start thinking about <laughs> shoe boxes. Uh, the shoe boxes can go where missionaries can't. Whether you're building your shoe boxes online or the traditional way, resources are available for you and there, we do have, uh, there's a limited amount right now, but we'll have more uh, later on when we get more into it. But, but some of the resources are out on the back table, uh, not the middle table, but the one over on this side uh, that you can look at. It's similar to what we did last year. You can either do it online or you can, uh, you can pack your own uh, the way you want to. Uh, you still have plenty of time to decide how you want to do this. Uh, and select your gifts before the shoebox dedication on Sunday, November the 14th. So November the 14th is when that will be dedicated. Uh, the session will meet this evening in Fellowship Hall at 6 p.m. Uh, the Zoom option is available. Uh, and I do have uh, the veteran should have received an invitation to the Pine Flat, the Rear Tank, Pine Flash Rear Tank Club, which hosted the veterans' dinner, and it's it will be on Saturday, November the sixth, twenty twenty one, at twelve o'clock at, at the Edgefield Christian Life Center. If you did not get an invitation, we have several that are out in the North Edge on the middle table. So pick one of these up and go ahead and respond, and it does hit your email and respond if you want. So let's see all the youth veterans there. How it's going to pan out, but someone you know might be the speaker. So <laughs> stay tuned for that. Someone who's been around a long time. All right, celebrating birthdays this week. Sandra Leonard on October 17th. Happy birthday, Sandra. And Vicki Jones on October the 23rd. So happy birthday to Vicki as well. October 23rd, also a big day for Gary and Judy Sweeney as they will be celebrating their wedding anniversary. Uh, does anybody else have any announcements? I feel like I I'm do. forgetting something. Go ahead. Um, I'm starting the Bible study to uh, the Christian life that will kind of sneaks up on, on me and probably the rest of us, if you're like me, every year, but October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and we are very fortunate to have a pastor, and we certainly appreciate you. <laughs> so, thought we have just a little something for you, and we certainly appreciate you being here and serving as our pastor. So first of all, thank you. Continue our service with a time of silent prayer, seeking the Holy Spirit in our personal time of worship.
is our dwelling place. A refuge when trouble is near. The Lord is our dwelling place. A temple that will stand forever. Let us pray. Our faithful Father, we begin today by giving you thanks. Your love endures forever. It never fails. Though there are many ways in which we have failed, we have not exceeded the supply of your mercy and grace. We thank you for revealing yourself to us through your word. As we open the Bible today, we pray that we would hear your voice. We ask that your Holy Spirit would be at work, opening our ears to hear and our hearts to receive your word. May we be transformed into your likeness through Jesus Christ our Lord, as we pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy name. Thy thy name. sheep we have all gone astray but like a faithful loving shepherd God seeks us out and calls us home let us confess our sin as we join in our prayer of confession Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ you, you know, know our, our sin. sin we want, want you to do whatever we ask of you but, but we, we are, are unwilling to do what you ask of us we, we want, want to sit beside you in the glory and we, we fail to stand the promise of the Lord. Those who love me, I, I, excuse me. <coughs> when you call me, I will answer. I will rescue you from danger and show you my salvation. Believe this good news in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Our opening hymn is number 464, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And after our opening hymn, Katie's going to come and have a children's moment and our special music. <laughs>
the real strong thing. Mark 10, verses 35 through 45. So then James and John and the sons of Zebedee came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right hand and the other in your left hand in glory. Well, you don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand or left is not for me to grant. These places belong for those whom, whom they have been prepared. So when the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give life as a ransom for many. So how many of you, I'm going to bring some of you back to the childhood, I hope, have ever done a wishbone off the turkey? My brother and I used to fight over it. And mom would always say, now you've got to let the grease cool. And she put it in a special place. And we knew after we ate, we got to do the wishbone. Well, how many of you would make a wish? I would. And sometimes it was the silliest thing when I was a kid. I was like, what in the world am I wishing for? As an adult, I look back. Well, Let's take a response this morning. So I'm going to count to the three, and I want you to say something that you would wish for. All right? I'm going to give you a second. One, two, three. Health would be something I would wish for. Right? Well, sometimes our wishes would come true. Sometimes they wouldn't, would they? So have you ever planned a picnic, but it rained, or a walk outside, and it poured? Perhaps you sat and the rain, looked at the rain, and you grumbled, and you were angry. I wish it'd stop raining. Well, what if you wished it, and it came true, and it never rained again? That'd be pretty sad, wouldn't it? So there would be no grass, no trees, no flowers, no rivers, no lakes, no streams. Everything would dry up, and life would begin to disappear. It's not something we would want, is it? So the world would be a miserable place if it stopped raining. All for a very innocent wish. Well, James and John were two brothers and the disciples of Jesus. So one day the two of them... As I read, said, Teacher, we want you to do whatever we ask. Well, what do you want me to do? Jesus replied. And in your glorious kingdom, we want to sit in the places of honor next to you. One on your right and one on your left. So you see, they thought that Jesus was going to set up an earthly kingdom. And they wanted to be on his right and his left hand. They wanted to share in his glory and his greatness. Well, Jesus answered, you don't know what you're asking. And they explained that whoever wants to be great must be a servant to all. For even I, the Son of Man, came here not to be served, but to serve others. It's hard sometimes, isn't it? And to give my life as a ransom for many. 
not to be served, but to serve. See, that's not so easy sometimes when you don't like that person, or maybe you don't agree with that person. He still calls us to serve, doesn't he? So, I don't think that being a servant was exactly what James and John was wishing for, was he? Were they, I guess I should say. So sometimes you and I might say, I wish I could be more like Jesus. Well, I know I've said that personally. I want to be more like Jesus. But is it really our wish? How do we do that? If we really want that wish to come true, we have to live as servants the way Jesus did. Only then can we truly be great and show the God's love to the world by serving. Isn't that great? Isn't that neat? Can you pray with me? Dear God, help us to mean it when we say, I wish I could be more like Jesus. <coughs> Please show us each day how to become a greater servant to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. was just a boy that God had plans to make it more but you don't really think that's true do you well it went like this day five and six creation bloomed out from his lips and God said it was good oh hallelujah hallelujah came in perfect peace the tempter came upon the scene they just had to eat the fruit and break communion the perfect God and broken man their sin passed down not as they planned no sacrifice was needed hallelujah hallelujah Jesus Christ on earth, the Son of God, miraculous birth. You think the world would bow and come unto you. He healed the sick and raised the dead, but his own rejected him instead. They nailed him to a cross of oh, hallelujah. the story isn't over yet you see jesus went to see the dead and in three days something happened that should move you 
Well, the stone was moved from off the tomb. The Savior raised to heaven's throne. Our sins all be forgiven. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Katie. That was certainly beautiful this morning. A blessing for all of us. One of God's gifts, talents, great love. So we go to our Lord in prayer for a moment. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for all that you do for us, for all that you give us with all the love that you have shown us, for all the comfort that you have provided. Father, there are many that are a part of this church that need your spirit, comfort, and guidance to watch over them, to heal, to nurture. There are many requests within our prayer list, and there are so many that are unspoken. We ask in your name, Jesus Christ, that you grant these requests if it be thy will. Lord, you are the Lord of lights, the Lord of wisdom. Your son has taught us with the word and the scripture and the truth. We come now seeking your illumination through the words that are given to us this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Before I get started, thank you all this morning and welcome to the house of the Lord on this beautiful fall day. And it is beginning to feel a little bit like fall. I woke up this morning and realized that we had the heat temperature set way low. And I was wondering why my feet were so cold because I normally don't get cold. Needless to say, it was 64 degrees in the house. That's kind of cold. But it is a blessing for change. It is a blessing in life as we carry on. It is a reminder that our Lord is great and wonders and does many things. And he reminds us sometimes who is in charge. I'd like to read this morning from our scripture in Psalms 104, verses 1 through 9. Hear the words. Praise the Lord my soul. The Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor 
and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and he rides on the wings of the wind. He makes the winds his messenger, flames of fire his servant. He set the earth on its foundation. It can never be moved. You covered it with the watery depths as with a garment. And the water stood above the mountains, but at your rebuke the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took flight. They flowed over the mountains and they went down into the valleys, into the place you assigned for them. You set the boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. And as Katie shared with us this morning out of the books of Mark chapter 10 verses 35, 45. Shall we hear the words once again? Then James and John, the son of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup that I drink or the baptism with the baptism that I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to set up my right hand or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant. John, or James and John, Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are in regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And thus ends the reading of the scripture this day. What does God look like to you? Have you ever imagined what God would look like to you? You know, I've been fortunate enough to see some of the great paintings and artistry from history. When I traveled, I've seen Michelangelo's Last Judgment. It's quite fascinating. But you know, even the greats have never really tried to create an image of God. You might look at it, you might realize that there is light in the picture. But what is that image of God? Who is 
God. What would he look like to you? Well, imagine for just a second as we read in the book from Psalms 104, it says, you are clothed with splendor and majesty. You wrap yourself in light as with a garment. Okay. The definition of splendor from the Latin term suggests a great light, a luster, brilliance, grandeur. So the psalmist kind of repeated themselves because they're saying, Lord, your grandeur is brilliant, bright, light. You wrap yourself in light. Why is this? It's hard for us to imagine, isn't it? It's hard for us to imagine our God without some imagery that someone else has shared with us. Has anyone seen God? We know the history of the Old Testament. We know about the burning bush. We know that God is an image that is for hard for us to really place. Now he says in the scripture, we're created in his image. But then again, the definition, you clothe yourself in splendor and majesty and you wrap yourself in light. So in a way, he's cloaked within this brilliance, this glad. We really don't know how to describe God. Other than the fact that it goes on to say that he stretches out the heavens, the universe, like a tent. His home is everywhere. He flies on the wings of wind. Now, I can imagine horses because I was an old horse person that loved to ride horses. You know, and I could even imagine putting wings on horses. But I can't imagine wind because I can't see wind. I know it's there. You know it's there. And even when you draw wind, you really draw something that gives the effect that it's there, but it's really not. It could even in just the simplest version be just little scribbly lines that kind of help you to understand something's pushing. But we don't see wind. We don't see God. We see this grandeur of brilliance and light. His chariots are clouds. Now that I got. You know, I've got clouds moving around with this brilliant light. And who knows how many wings of wind moving God around. But if his tent is the size of our universe, it must take a lot of wings to carry our God. It is magnificent, isn't it? It is a great deal of splendor to imagine our God. You know, for most of us, we really, really, really want to control it into a more simplistic image. We want God to come and really be our size. We really want to tell God what to do and not allow God to tell us what to do. We can imagine. He 
He makes the wings of his messengers flames of fire are his servants. Now, I don't know about you, but I've sat out in camps late of the evening after the marshmallows and the chocolate and all the other stuff and just stared at the flames. It's kind of mesmerizing, isn't it? And to imagine that that is the servant. Of God. The last day of judgment. And Michelangelo hears all these really strange characters that fit within the revelations. Now, if I was drawing it, yeah, they'd look like stick men, probably. No, I'm a little better than that, but I could not imagine what he imagined. But I could have probably came up with something. And since he came before me, I would have studied his before I decided to design mine. Right? Because we lean on others. We lean on each other to learn, to grow. Our image is based on what people know before us. And yet, the great psalmist, can tell us about the earth and its foundation being built and placed here safely. That it being flooded and the waters retreating and they cannot flood again as they did originally. But his image of God is really unclear with the exception of light, splendor, and majesty. All words that kind of come together and mean the same. A breeze. I know Larry Becker is a photographer. He knows about light because light affects pictures. Light affects images. It controls what you can do and what you can't do. I was out yesterday at the lake trying to take some pictures and the sun had gotten a little bit too far down for a few of my pictures. I still like it. There was still some light out there, but it was a little bit farther away than I wanted it. There was a crowd of people down at the lake standing at the water trying to catch that last little bit of sun coming down. So I went somewhere else, and when I did, I was just a little bit too much shadows. But that is the splendor of God. That is the majesty of God. That is the wonders of our world that we enjoy such. And then I think about a TV show that some of us watched in the 90s. The next generation of Star Trek. This shape-shifting woman that was a, a teenager for the show. And at the last minute, she changes into this light that has sort of a human figure, but does A brightness. And I think, well... That might be Hollywood's interpretation of God, but it wouldn't be mine. I'm having to deal with this whole universe being his tent. So I can't imagine this orb of light being in front of me that's my size. In fact, I I can't imagine what size God is. I mean, his whole universe, his whole creation is his home. Then we move to the human being. It's easier for us to imagine the words of Mark. have a hard time 
understanding God and all of his splendor and majesty, all of his greatness, all of the brilliance that he's given us. All the love, the grace, the peace, hope, truth. But we try. We try to absorb them. And one way that we can is by God in person, Jesus Christ. And so we have this scripture in Mark where the disciples come to him not knowing what's coming next, but doing the normal scrupulous things that sometimes human beings want to do, which is power grab. Right? That's really what they were interested in. Lord, let me sit on your right hand or your left hand, whatever you want. Let one of us be one side and let the other one be on the other side. So that we can have power and authority. So that we can be the ones that people have to come to before they come to you. That image is easy for me. As the scripture says, you know that there are those who regard, who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles, lorded over them. And their high officials exercise authority over them. So we, we understand that. Leaders building blockades before us, creating hurdles before us, dictating to us. What can and can't be. That we can understand. And so you've got ten disciples, and two of them want to be the best. They want to be at the right and the left of Jesus Christ, first in line. How many of you have ever been driving down the road and had somebody just pass by you in a hurry? The other day I was on 394 going to work early in the morning, way before daylight. There were several cars on my left-hand side and one in front of me. Believe it or not, I was traveling the speed limit. And all of a sudden I looked in my rearview mirror on the right-hand side. On the edge of the road. Near Blockwood. I was only, I was inside of this stoplight that was coming up. And it was red. But they still went by us. And ran on through the light. Wasn't a police officer. Wasn't an emergency vehicle. There was no flashing lights on. Just We can imagine, can't we? We know people don't want to wait. We know people are very demanding. But Jesus said to James and John, can you really drink of my suffering? Because really, that's what he was asking when you can, he says, can you drink of the cup? My suffering. They didn't understand that. They said, sure we can. You can drink from the cup, we can drink from the cup. And they would. But they didn't understand. Can you be baptized as I am being baptized? Sure we can. But we can't. Because we're not gods. We're humans. We're creation of splendor and majesty 
and brilliance and grandeur. We're part of the creation within his tent. We are created and loved. And so Jesus said, wait a minute. Slow down just a minute. You need to understand life on the right hand and the left hand has already been taken care of for Jesus. Criminals on both sides. Now to the cross. Mary Lynn was talking about the image of the cross this morning and how it's changed after the death of Jesus Christ, but beforehand, women walking around with a cross on their necklace would not have been a good thing. That would have been an image of death. That would have been an image of someone who liked to see people killed. I told her about church in Mexico not wanting to use the cross so much the Christian churches not the Catholic churches and part of it has to do with the power grab that the Catholic church has over the state of Mexico and they don't want to be associated with it and they see the cross not as the image that we think of of Jesus Christ dying for our salvation. They see the cross as the power of a church. So see, now we've gone from the cross being an awful image of death before Christ to seeing Jesus Christ die on that to understanding the purpose and the plan of Jesus Christ on the cross to some now seeing the cross as an image of something else. Over time, things change. People change. But God doesn't change. Jesus said to them, the, the rulers of the Gentile lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. So, God in person flips it around. The authority, the triangle, the power. And you know what I'm talking about. In the business, you know, you have the workers down here and the leader up at the top. The power chain of authority. Some businesses try to flip that triangle upside down and put the leader down here and empower their employees above. But that empowerment really comes from similar scriptures where you learn to serve. You learn to give. You learn to imagine yourself as God has been for us. After all, his universe is his tent, his world that he created for us. The wind can carry him to and fro wherever he wants. The clouds are his chariot. And yet, in all this bright, brilliant imagery that we think of God, his one gift to the human race that changes all things is the image of our Savior on a cross, nailed to it, dying, 
with two criminals on both sides. And before that, serving the disciples and telling them what would take place and how they would not follow at first. In fact, would turn him in. And this is the image of God. The blood shed upon that cross the death because he served you as a ransom that we couldn't pay for ourselves for our sins and our death. It's hard to be humble. But it is humbling when we think about this. Christ served us willingly. He followed, he healed, he nurtured. He listened to directions of others. He prayed. He asked the Lord to provide each of us with a gift. We call him the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the voice of God within. I can hear the voice of God within. I know what the Holy Spirit can lead me and teach me and help me. And there's sometimes that when I'm struggling and I open up the Bible, having prayed, all of a sudden the words just jump out of the page at me because the Spirit's guiding me. I've sat sometimes for hours on hours thinking, what can I do? What can I say? And open up the Bible and there it is. Because the Spirit is there. God in person. Not the normal image, but the image of the ransom for each of us. Death on the cross. Life made anew. We are baptized by his blood and washed clean of our sins. Remember that as you go forward. Thinking about your God and what he has his only son do while he was here with us. Shall we pray? Father, it is truly hard for us to imagine our world in the light of your son. Yes, John and James said that they could serve and they could be at the right hand and the left hand of your son. Yet we know they were not even prepared for that. Father, we know that we're not completely prepared because we do not understand all things. We are not the center of the universe. You are the center of the universe for us. Lord, we cannot imagine the splendor and the majesty and the glory that you represent. But we do understand the humble ransom given out of your grace to help bring peace and salvation to each of us through your Son. We're grateful for your spirit and we pray that your spirit continue to guide and lead us and show us your way that we may not stumble with our feet, with our words or with our hearts. 
but that we might walk in the light that you provide in the delight of your teachings. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Shall we stand? <coughs> Affirmation of our faith. Christians, what is it that you believe in? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born under Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit upon the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hymn number 379, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. now may the strength of God sustain you. May the power of God preserve you. May the hands of God protect you. May God direct you and teach you and share his blessings upon you. May God's love go with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>